Hello, in this video of the ADLM 2000 series, we'll discuss the Spectrum Analyzer and its features. This instrument makes use of the two analog input channels, which are capable of measuring signals in the range of minus plus 25 volts. The Spectrum Analyzer processes the captured signals and displays these in the frequency domain. Plug the module into the computer using the USB connector in the middle, Open Scopy and click the Connect button. In this example, we'll use the analog outputs of the M2K to generate some test signals. We'll use the Spectrum Analyzer to inspect these as far as frequency is concerned. To do this, we'll have to connect the analog inputs and outputs. W1 to 1 plus and ground to 1 minus. W2 to 2 plus and ground to 2 minus. Open the signal generator. For channel 1, go to the math menu and type in the formula shown on the screen. You can copy this from the video description and paste it into the edit box. Set the record length to 1 millisecond and the sample rate to 75 mega samples per second. The record length sets the time interval for one buffer of the generated signal. For channel 2, set a square wave of 1 kHz with an amplitude of 2 volts peak to peak from the waveform menu. Notice that the waveform we generated mathematically resembles the square wave. Press the run button when you're done and open the spectrum analyzer. In the main window, you can find the signal plot, channel controls, and buttons for sweep and markers. The single button will capture only one sweep of data. On the other hand, the run button is used to start continuous acquisition for the enabled channels. Click the single button and observe the plot. The spectrum of our signal is now displayed in the range of 0 to 50 MHz. For a better viewing of our spectral components, we can change the sweep settings. Click the sweep settings button and let's adjust some parameters. The sweep menu sets the desired frequency interval to be analyzed. All the changes made in this menu apply to both channels. You may choose between linear and logarithmic scales for the frequency axis. In the Frequency tab, you can set the range of frequencies to be analyzed. This can be done either by setting the start and stop frequency values or by specifying the center frequency and the span. The spectrum may go up to 50 MHz. In the Amplitude tab, you can set the amplitude range displayed using the top and bottom controls. The scale per division sets the scale on the y-axis. The units drop-down provides several options as measurement unit for the amplitude. The resolution bandwidth drop-down sets the frequency delta between two spectrum points. This controls the number of samples acquired. The signals acquired by the M2K's ADC are processed in Scopy to be displayed in the frequency domain. The greater the number of samples, the more time it will take Scopy to plot the corresponding FFT. We'll keep the default option for units. The resolution bandwidth is set to 12.21 kHz. Set the scale to 15. Set the top amplitude to 0 and the bottom value will update based on the top one and the scale. Let's set the stop frequency to 10 kHz. Notice that the center and span also adjust accordingly. Run the instrument again. Each channel has its own menu. The color correspondence is the same as for the other instruments of Scopy. Orange for channel 1 and purple for channel 2. Let's disable channel 2 for the time being and run the instrument again. The spikes we see correspond to the fundamental frequency of 1 kHz and its four odd harmonics that we use to generate our signal. We can inspect each point using the markers. Markers measure the amplitude at a specific frequency point. Scopy can have up to five markers on each channel. You can enable or disable the markers from their own checkboxes. When the marker is active, the checkbox is filled. Now we have a marker placed at the center frequency of our plot, 5 kHz. The markers can be moved along the plot by clicking and dragging them on the frequency axis. Alternatively, the frequency position can be changed from its corresponding control. The marker control buttons automatically position the selected marker based on their function. Peak 
places the marker at the highest peak on the plot. The marker is now set at 1 kHz. Left peak and right peak move the marker to the peak on the left or on the right. Down amplitude moves the marker to the next segment which is lower in amplitude. Up amplitude moves the marker to the next segment which is higher in amplitude. We can see that for greater frequencies the amplitude decreases. Set marker 1 back to the 1 kHz peak and enable the other markers. Set each marker on one peak using the control buttons. Then enable the marker table. Below the plot, the following information is displayed for each marker. The marker number, the channel it currently measures, the frequency, the magnitude and the type. The type states whether the marker was set manually or using the designated control buttons. The markers are displayed in the order in which they were enabled. Knowing that our signal composed of odd harmonics resembles a square wave and that we set the two test signals to have the same fundamental frequency, if we enable channel 2, the peaks should overlap. Go back to the sweep menu, set the stop frequency to 100 kHz and run the instrument again. As you can see, the spectrum of the signal on channel 2 contains more components than the one we have on channel 1. Notice that the amplitude continues to decrease as the order of the harmonic increases. Let's have a look at channel specific settings. The options available in the type drop down menu are the several types of averaging available in Scopy Spectrum Analyzer. For any of the options except sample, you can set the desired number for averaging. Let's set the type to peak hold, continuous and an averaging of 100. Run the instrument. Above the plot, the number of processed samples out of 100 is displayed. The maximum average value is 1000 for peak hold, mean hold, linear RMS and linear dB. And 1 million for peak hold continuous, minimum hold continuous, exponential RMS and exponential dB. The history button is available only in the case of linear RMS and linear dB averaging. If disabled, the maximum value for these averaging types is 1 million. Namely, the window drop-down provides the available options for the window function to be applied to the signal. The purpose of FFT windowing is to attenuate signal discontinuities that may appear at the beginning or end of the data buffer. For a more detailed description of the window types Scopy offers and their usage, please refer to the wiki page of the Spectrum Analyzer given in the video description. You can also set the ADC's gain mode from this menu. By clicking the snapshot button, the current signal plotted on the selected channel is saved as reference. The general settings brings up a menu which contains the export data button. This button saves the plotted samples as a CSV or a text file. The settings button on the right will bring up any of the other panels you had open last. These are the features of the Spectrum Analyzer instrument. The feature videos will handle the other instruments of Scopy. For more resources and information on the ADLM2000 module and Scopy, please visit wiki.analog.com. If you have questions that these videos do not answer to, please feel free to ask us on the Engineer Zone forum in the Virtual Classroom section. You'll find links to all kinds of helpful pages in the video description. Thanks for watching!